Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Eben English from the Boston Public Library, uh, if you don't know me already. I'm the, uh, the facilitator of the Newspapers Interest Group. Um, just wanted to give a quick overview of what the Newspapers Interest Group does and what we've been up to uh, for the past few months. Basically, the Newspapers Interest Group um, is just intended to facilitate conversations between institutions that are interested in managing um, digitized newspaper content uh, in within Fedora, Samvera, digital repository systems. So um, it also is uh, kind of tangentially tangentially related to the news, uh, newspapers in Samvera grant that um, the BPL and University of Utah uh, received from the IMLS. Uh, that's a two-year grant project and we're about a year in right now. So uh, one of the main activities that we do in the newspapers interest group meetings, which are uh, monthly, first Thursdays of the month, is um, we review the progress of the grant um, and then we usually have some topics uh, around newspaper data modeling um, that we discuss. Um, Different folks might provide insight into how they're doing it at their institutions, if they already have collections, or um, how we might best approach uh, certain problems from uh, the Sam Vera Fedora perspective. So um, things like best practices for modeling word coordinate data in JSON, um, you know, whether or not to store um, Alto XML derivatives in Fedora or, or you know, in, in the file system, how, how best to manage that kind of stuff. Um, I'm running out of time, so if you're interested, uh, again, we meet first Thursday of the month. The wiki page is up here, and we'd love to have you. Thanks. Thank you, Evan. Um, ben, you're up for the component maintenance working group. How quickly can we migrate to the, or navigate to the, to the meeting right. pages? Yeah. Program Thursday. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Do, do you want to go to the working group? Page? I do. Uh, I uh -huh. and go to the main page and then the, the, the sign-ups are all linked. Thank you. I'm just going to leave this page up because it seems not unlikely that somebody else would have linked something there. Uh, this is not the page that I signed up or put stuff in. No. Is there another page that is like this? <laughs> <laughs> that was a draft, I'm sorry. And then scroll all the way down, there are two of these that are going to look the same as the top one of these. Keep going. Uh, that or, or the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Come across this. this is what I get for not trying to get my slides into that other template thing. Uh, I didn't want those other two minutes anyway. Uh, I'll skip the review of, uh, of our charter because I think uh, everybody can probably imagine where we are. Although it might be useful to remind everyone in the preceding charter for this working group, uh, which we reported out on at the spring meeting, uh, our big deliverable was defining the minimum standards of quality and, uh, and maintenance that we would use for, uh, for libraries that we identified as a core component. And in this uh, second phase, we tried to actually do them. So the things that, the deliverables we outlined in our charter are here, but I will move forward from these things to uh, where we started and what we actually did. So we had 21 candidate core components at the beginning of the charter, 
Uh, eight of those components were things that, uh, that we felt like might be deprecated. And there were three components in labs, uh, Bixby, Valkyrie, and IIIF Manifest that we talked about uh, in different capacities over the course of, a, of this charter uh, for possible promotion. And one of the, uh, the really significant deliverables that we worked on was getting everything that we had identified as a core component released at least at 1.0 so that we could proceed with semantic versioning for, uh, for the APIs in that library. So uh, Bixby actually, that, I mean in labs, not, not promoted yet, but useful to track because it's in almost all of the libraries now, um, was released at 1.0 in February. And uptake has been pretty good. So those numbers here are comparisons of the dependency usage report that I did at the spring meeting uh, that I ran again for this meeting. And Bixby 1.0 uh, is, you know, now, what is that, about 60% of the installations, which is not bad. Uh, we also released Hydra PCDM, HydraWorks, uh, and file characterization. LDP was released earlier. These somewhat less uh, sanguine about the uptake over here, especially because uh, a lot of these libraries are seeing new installations. They're just not seeing new installations of the 1.0 release. Uh, we're hypothesizing that that's because of some dependency problems related to Active Fedora and also maybe Hydra access controls. So as we move forward with some of, uh, some of the supporting work on these, uh, these other libraries, we anticipate that this is going to move forward, but it's a thing that we want to keep track of right now. Uh, of, the, of the things that we had suggested we would try and deprecate, uh, uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat worrying, almost all of them saw increased dependencies, uh, new installations, even Hydra, which I was kind of baffled by. Uh, it's possible that that's a, like a test repository or something like that. That might actually be like Mark Bussey trying to figure out whether Hydra works or something, I don't know. Uh, but otherwise, uh, all of them have, uh, have big uptakes. I mean, especially Omen Solarizer, that again is a place where we, uh, we su are, are suspicious that there's an interdependency probably with file characterization. Uh, is that my time? Get out, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, we'll do some other stuff. Uh, these slides are linked. So really what I should say is we did a lot of things. We, we released stuff, we deprecated things, and uh, I, would, I would like to uh, maybe draw some attention to a couple of things uh, real fast, which is that one of our core components, the LDP gem, lost its product owner over the course of our charter. So I'm going to be stumping today for someone to be the product owner of this gem. Uh, another is we weren't able to get Browse Everything released at 1.0. That's a goal, but we need some help with that. And finally, that almost all of our products are dependent on Blacklight. Blacklight doesn't have the minimum levels of support that we have chartered for, for this group, and it's something that is going to matter for the community. Um, I have some other things to say about APIs, but I'll get, uh, I'll get out of people's way. Uh, I'll be on Slack with more. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, 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 the nutshell thing is one of the, one of the really significant things that we discovered uh, trying to do these things, uh, da, 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 is this the slide? Uh, no, no, yes. Uh, there were some things that, uh, that we thought we had a grasp on how we would do them, but turned out to be somewhat more difficult than we anticipated. And one of them is, uh, everybody knows what semantic versioning is, or a lot of people uh, do and what it ought to be, but when we actually tried to adhere to that practice, we stumbled almost immediately on the fact that very few of our libraries actually define what their public API is, and instead just kind of rely on what you can do with Ruby, possibly having some private or protected methods. But in the main, as a Ruby library, there's very little in the way of actual uh, API protection that's built into the runtime and very little in the way of documentation about what the, the intended APIs are for these libraries. So we have some ideas about how we would do that going forward, but that's going to be a really labor-intensive task 
it's one that's necessary for semantic versioning to mean anything to the community, and that is a point of consensus, but it's just something that, uh, as far as resourcing this effort, we need to, uh, we need to be very, uh, very deliberate about. space Sam Vera interest group yeah and like I said a very short update that it's a uh, D space to higher X uh, migration interest group and there's not much interest so hopefully soon <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> we started off this group about uh, a year back and at that time uh, OSU and we were really uh, so I'm from Michigan so Michigan and OSU are really interested in migrating, and OSU has done a lot of migration, so we are actually working, gonna be working with them and others. So if, unless if we find more interest, Ryan and I co-facilitate this group, um, we might keep it going if there is some interest. The other thing is we are presenting today, and George is here too, uh, a, it's um, a panel about uh, migrations from different um, systems to Hyrex. So it's at 4.30 today. If you still have the energy, by the end of the day, do come and listen to us. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Steve Van Tile, um, Hyrex Analytics Working Group. Um, I believe he's the whole Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. So you get <laughs> as much time as you want. Okay. So Repo Managers Group uh, is co-facilitated by myself and uh, Julie Rudder. And uh, we meet uh, fourth Wednesday of the month at one o'clock. And yesterday we had a working session and um, we, we had really a good discussion, which I wrote down on a paper. So I'm going to share that with you. Uh, we have two subgroups. Uh, currently, one subgroup was Hyrex Release Testing Subgroup. You might be familiar with the work. Uh, Julie really worked hard on that uh, with the UX uh, interest group to get uh, the testing done. There's a new subgroup starting now, which is uh, Repo Managers Discoverability Subgroup. So there are some repo managers um, mostly from service side. They're really interested in um, the discoverability of the data sets and all the, um, you know, the works that are being put in in the IRs. Um, you can find more information on that on the wiki page. So a few other things that we worked, um, that we talked about yesterday was um, uh, there are so many institutions who have done customization in the code. And we, we, talk, we talk to each other and we're like, oh, we have done that too, oh, you have done that too. So how about we work on making a list of all the customization and then working with the product owner and tech lead, Steve and Tom, to see what other things that we can put it back in the code base. So that would be something you'll be hearing from us if your institution has done any customizations. So if you can put it on that wiki page. The other thing is there are some features which service managers, <clears throat> excuse me, service managers reported that they are not very user friendly or they are functionally they are working, but they are not working as intended from service side. So that would be another audit we'll be doing. So another page on the wiki that would be like, okay, these are the features. If you think that they should be working in a different way or they don't meet your um, specifications, then uh, just identify those and how. So that would be another thing that we'll be asking for like use cases, like one example was embargo. So at our institutions, the service manager was like, this is not what she expects from embargo. So things like that. Um, yep, that is, uh, that is all the update from me. <laughs> Uh, we have time for questions. Anybody? Any questions? Okay. Um, next up is okay. For the uh, Samvera Content DM Migration Interest yeah. Group. Did he leave up those other ones? He did. So on, this is similar to Nabila's um, 
uh, DSpace to Hyrax group. So we're the content migration group, or the content DM to Hyrax group. We meet every third Thursday. Um, I'm here for Andy. He's the, Andy Widener is the main um, person for this group. Um, I know, I think it died for a little bit, and then we revived it with our Bridge to Haiku project. Um, people, uh, mostly it's people showing what they're doing to get themselves off of content di uh, DM. Um, from a Bridge to Haiku standpoint, we're going to be, um, probably that's where we're going to go to first for our public beta test um, late winter. Uh, it's, it's really all there is. It's pretty short. If you are still trying to get onto Hyrax from Content DM, join this group. Let us know. Thanks. Uh, any questions for Todd? Yeah. I'll also be on that migration group uh, call. All right. Uh, next is, oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't notice this this morning, but uh, Andrew has uh, a conflict. Uh, but he says for the uh, Sam Vera documentation working group that uh, you can email him for information. Uh, next is the Sam Vera geospatial interest group and James Griffin. Everyone will excuse me. I've rolled together the updates for the geospatial interest group and the geopredicates working group, given that the uh, updates for the former are quite brief. So on behalf of the geospatial interest group, um, really, there aren't too many updates that we would like to share with the community. Uh, first and foremost, unfortunately, our chair left the Sambara community in February. For those of you who know him, this was Darren Hardy of uh, Stanford. So there is still an active request for anyone who would like to volunteer to serve as a new chair for the geospatial interest group. Um, there's a message right out there on the San Vera community mailing list. And uh, please, anyone with just any interest in um, geospatial assets in repositories, are, they're welcome to apply. You don't need to be a domain specialist necessarily. Um, following this, there's been some updates, but not many, to the GeoWorks Samvera gem, which still resides in Samvera Labs. Uh, for those of you who are aware of the core component maintenance working groups um, requirements, because it's in labs, it's not actually something that that working group can actively maintain or update. So um, reviews or contributions uh, for that gem are quite welcome, or particularly toward that's directed towards anyone here who might be looking to integrate um, geospatial data models for a Hyrax instance. Um, and finally, again, just to reiterate, you know, we're trying to issue forth a larger call for participation from within the community. Um, by all means, contact any one of us who are mentioned on the, uh, the conflicts page. So moving ahead to the working group update for uh, geopredicates. Uh, so just to review our charter briefly, uh, basically it was to develop a core set of recommended RDF predicates that were basically used to ex uh, express uh, spatial metadata as uh, linked data for geospatial um, digital repository objects. And um, you know, following a brief timeline, we met physically uh, at the last Umvera Connect. We also had a remote meeting at geo for lib Camp 2018. Um, more recently, we um, taken some time to work on our deliverables throughout the spring and summer. Um, we're nearing completion, but we still are actively in progress in terms of fulfilling our charter. Um, just a brief outline of what we've been doing. We're following the uh, me for map methodology. It's a methodology released by the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative for defining a metadata application profile. Um, here we just we basically produce some domain models, metadata attributes. We undertake an environmental scan to see what others are doing with spatial linked data on the web. And we recommend mappings for RDF, uh, from existing RDF vocabularies to the attributes that we've identified from our domain models. Um, so again, it's mostly documentation oriented. Um, uh, again, 
the final deliverable has yet to be drafted and released to the community for feedback. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to be providing more information about this process for anyone who might be interested in uh, contributing to this work or just getting generally involved uh, later this afternoon uh, in room 1180 at 12.30 p.m. And um, that's it. And just a quick thanks to everyone who contributed to both the interest group and the working group. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions? All right. Uh, next is Julie Allenson for the uh, Samvera Hyrax Batch Import Working Group. Is Julie here? Steve. Oh, well, <laughs> here's Steve. Uh, we'll <laughs> you're on. <laughs> so we'll we'll go back to uh, you. You have three in a row for the Hyrax Analytics and the Hyrax Working Group. Uh, no, I'm sorry, two. I think there's another one. Can I just do it now? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I won't talk about the Hyrax Working Group because I think you've all heard a lot about it so far, unless you want me to. Is there anybody who feels like they haven't heard enough about the Hyrax Working Group? No, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, uh, analytics, okay, so the analytics working group is sort of maybe not really a thing that should exist anymore. Um, the, the work, the primary work of that group was to build out the requirements that the community is looking for uh, for an overhaul of analytics in Hyrax and then we put together a smallish team to try to do some implementation of the design and requirements there. Um, we got a little ways, but we got kind of caught up in the machinery of the Hyrax 2.1 release around collection extensions and had to push the pause button on that because it was too complicated to try to like um, sort of manage all of that stuff all at once. Um, and we haven't unpaused that process because we haven't been able to sort out resourcing for that development work. Um, that said, I think that there, uh, I think that if we put together a smallish team again, that the implementation of the remaining work would be fairly straightforward. So that's gonna be one of the asks that we put out uh, for folks. And I know that analytics overhaul is one of the things that people are eagerly seeking. So. Um, as usual for the things that everybody wants, it sort of makes sense that everybody would maybe find some something to, to throw at the effort. So expect to hear more about that soon. <clears throat> what was the other one? Uh, well, do you want to do questions? <laughs> oh, first? sure, yeah. Are there any questions about analytics uh, working group stuff? Okay. Yeah, oh, no, there's a question. I'll repeat it if, is that what we're doing? That's cool. cool. I was just wondering what the state of the actual code for that is. So state of the actual code for that. So the state of the actual code for that is that it's sitting in a branch right now that's like a thousand years behind master, uh, which is part of the problem. Um, and so Tom, in his efforts to kind of stop, stop us from doing that kind of thing, um, is eager to work with whoever's resource to do that work, to bring that the the stuff that we want to keep back in to master and then move forward. But what what essentially took place is there were some, a tiny bit of the front end work was done uh, around kind of offering some of the new options in the dashboard. Um, and then a lot of consideration was put into the back end for um, like database changes that would need to happen for the different types of data we're going to be pulling in from Google Analytics. Um, so. That's where it is right now. But the, on the analytics uh, working group homepage on the wiki, you can kind of see the process uh, and see the design that's there. Um, and then contact me if you have questions about anything else. Yep. And the other uh, update was for CIGAR, the interest group for advising Hyrax roadmap. Yeah, so uh, two things to talk about Cigar. One is that if you wanna really know what's happening with Cigar, come to the breakout at 12.30. Um, but Cigar is an ongoing group, it's an open group, anybody can come to it. Um, somehow we kind of came under this cloud 
of cigar smoke <laughs> that kind of made people think maybe it was a closed group, but we really intend that group to be something that um, anybody can come to and offer input or just listen. Um, and I was just in a lightning session and we had a brief discussion about other ways that that group can can facilitate people giving input apart from call-ins, which are awkward at times. Um, we, we even talked about fireside chats. <laughs> <laughs> Expect to see me in front of a fireplace. Um, Do you own a cardigan? <laughs> come on. <laughs> the, the librarian lab coat? Of course I own one of those. So, uh, yeah, so Cigar is going to continue meeting on a monthly basis. The schedule for those meetings is on the wiki page for Cigar. Um, and then we're gonna have a longer session at, at 12.30 today about um, what's going on with Cigar and how to contribute and talking about road mapping for Hyrax. Um, I think that's all. Oh, we're also gonna change the acronym because people hate it for some reason. <laughs> I'm really proud of it myself. Any other questions on that working group? Where is this? <sighs> Oh, the breakout. Um, Brian, do you know where? It's on the wiki. <laughs> it's in here. Thank you. How do you search the wiki? Oh, dear. <laughs> that is a valid question. Uh, yeah, so it's in here. OK. Um, is Julie Allenson here? No. OK. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Hi, I'm Julie Allenson. I work for CoSector in London. Um, I've grown slightly in the last <laughs> few hours. So uh, Julie has been coordinating a group to talk about bulk activities in Hyrax. And by that, we mean essentially bulk or batch round tripping of data in, in Hyrax. Um, which sort of includes bulk edit, but that's a side conversation. Um, and I think that working group has kind of come to some conclusions about, well, about a variety of approaches that people are using right now or that people want to use. And uh, I know Chris is working on something on a project with WGBH around bulk stuff. But ultimately, I think based on a conversation like 48 hours ago, um, we're probably going to be moving forward with an implementation of bulk round tripping, um, possibly paid for by the Oregon Digital Administration um, and with a contractor. But we're looking for input, continued input from the people who are interested in this stuff, um, but are going to be kind of focusing that conversation around um, Hyrax and Hyrax implementers and. Um, Hyrax dependent folks like Avalon and Haiku and so on. But I think that we've, we've got through that working group, we gathered a good sense of what the requirements are, um, what the expectations are. So I'm pretty optimistic, which is unusual for me, that we actually will move forward on this and um, have something in place maybe by late spring. So that's the hope there. Any questions on uh, the import group? Should Thank I just you. stay up here? What's the next <laughs> I think, one? <laughs> I think you're done. <laughs> uh, Ruth Tillman is here yes. for the Metadata Interest Group. Good morning. Um, so I'm here to provide a, a brief update for the Metadata Interest Group. I'm going to see if I can make the computer do something. Let's see how that goes. Um, my co-facilitator uh, for this, uh, Julie Hardesty, is not here. Um, but we had our meeting yesterday, and I'm just reporting in a little bit on the work of the group for the year. Um, first, the mods to RDF recommendation, which I believe will be talked about this afternoon or later this morning, um, and that's on the schedule. Um, it's been completed. It's been out for comment. And essentially, they are compiling comments and trying to deal with a few sticky um, Sorry, sticky pieces. I'm, this is a very strange computer view. Um, then we had, uh, we reviewed the Hyrax. Our big project for the year was uh, 
project around documentation. We had hoped that we could provide some sort of useful feedback to the community um, related to documentation. We had started with trying to collect everyone's documentation and that went about as smoothly as hurting metadata librarians. Um, so instead we decided to look at a different approach to it and began reviewing one of the core products, namely Hyrax, um, what the core metadata fields in it were for a generic object, and reviewing with both an eye to documenting these fields and to recommending changes and updates because a number of strange predicates that had been in people's local instances sort of crept into the main um, code. So we came up with um, this documentation, which was then um, given to the documentation working group and they approved and pulled it into the main documentation. We're looking at maybe moving forward with some other areas, whether it's for Avalon, whether it's uh, essentially profiles for other work types. Um, and we had a number of small working groups throughout the year, such as the Metadata Ordering and Hyrax group put together a recommendation slash analysis of how people were dealing with issues like ordering author names and things that you may have to deal with in an IR context. Those reports can be found on the Metadata Interest Group's um, wiki page. And we have another group that's sort of trying to revive. It's the Community Vocab Manager group, but there are a number of questions about what domain would particularly would be used to host it and who would be making some of these decisions. Um, so that's still sort of work on hold. Um, we have representation on some of the major groups now. We're trying to really get a metadata focus involved in more of the ongoing work of the community. So we have um, Julie Hardesty is on CIGAR and Jen Young is on the Roadmap Council to give feedback on that. And I think our goal for the upcoming year is to do more in the way of documentation. We had some interesting discussions with Chrissy Rissmeyer and Arwen Hutt about ways in which they've been uh, constructing something called Houndstooth, which is based on dog biscuits and Scooby snacks. Um, <laughs> which you can get a kind of a theme in the metadata community, but it, documenting both um, descriptive information about the metadata fields that would be being used, but also th questions that developers might need, like what's the cardinality of this and what's the obligation of this and being able to generate documentation to compare local practices and something other than pulling together everybody's documentation as a group of uh, spreadsheets, for example. So we are hoping to do some of that work in the next year. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the um, um, of the metadata interest group? Okay. Thank you. Um, Do we want to ask if Julie wants to give a yeah. an actual update? Um, so Steve uh, filled in for you, but uh, no, I'm at 9:45. You, you're, you're, we had a little uh, oh, right. slippage. <laughs> Okay, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've got slides in, there was a shared presentation, I don't know if you've got that, that was on Slack. Oh yeah, it's oh. definitely linked up there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is the internet. <laughs> uh, 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 the, uh, that's where everyone has been putting the, the link that... that um, uh, Todd, Todd created it and I don't know whether everyone's put slides in there, but okay. I don't know if there's a few in there. Um, Let's make sure there's a link somewhere from the wiki. I know I, I have that. Sorry, it's not on the wiki. You click on the Simbarra Connect 2018 on the left. Scroll down. There it is. Top, right under the very left, right? Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. The red one. This one? Okay. Uh -huh. I wasn't sure if we should be. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I can. Uh, I can't sign in because I don't know the password for either of my Google accounts. <laughs> Without going and getting my phone and filling in a Google Authenticate code. Uh, I can sign in. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Slack's not on here, is it? Yes.
with all this tiny screen. <laughs> Can you request access and then can Brian give you access? Give me like two seconds. Okay. So if you click on the uh, request access. Am I the last one then or does anyone else want to go? I think there's just... Wondering if while we so refresh the center and connect to the key page. It's because everything that you actually need has been squashed off this tiny screen. Yeah. So the same link? Um, okay, so um, so since I think it was July, um, I've been leading this um, Harax Batch Import Export, Export Working Group. Um, so um, prior to that, there was a bunch of messages on the uh, tech and community list uh, sort of assessing interest in uh, a more generalised solution for um, in, ingest batch import um, and. There was quite a lot of interest, and obviously, many, many people have to import stuff into a repository or migrate content from one repository to another. So there's a bunch of sort of reasons why um, re use cases for for this work. So importing from a digitization project, migrating between repositories, uh, bash updating existing stuff, um, exporting for import into a different system like a preservation system and then um, exporting the repository to, to kind of leave some error and move to a different system. So there was seemed to be general agreement that there was a need or there was a lot of duplicated work happening across the community and it would be nice to have something sort of central. Um, this is just the, the people that were on the, the working group. I just wanted to shout out to, to everyone. Um, I had two sort of things that I wanted to push. One was that I wanted there to be an, a, a, an API for adding things to Hyrax, which there isn't at the moment, a RESTful API. And two, I wanted it to be import-export because it's just as important to be able to get things out as it is to be able to get things in. So um, that, everyone agreed with, with, my, uh, with those principles. Um, so just a bit, little bit about what we did in the group. So these were the three main outputs. Um, so we did some work around use facing requirements and we assessed what the different institutions on the group needed and we kind of came up with a must and should list. And I'm not, I'm not going to go through these in detail, but everything's linked on there. They're all Google Docs. Um, I think I've left comment access on, so if people have kind of feedback and comments, please go, go ahead. Um, and then the other thing we did in the group, and I can't remember whose idea it was to do this, is we got people who'd got existing tools to, um, to demo them on the calls. And Greg Reznor from UCSD, I think, I get my UCs mixed up, um, he re recorded them all. So there are recordings of the demos and there are notes in the minutes about the demos. And so they were really, really useful because what, what that showed is there's a bunch of different approaches. There's lots of overlap between those approaches. Each one we saw had something that the others didn't have. Um, 
and so that was a really, really useful way of getting the discussion going and actually getting thinking about all the different sort of range of requirements. Um, and then the, the third output was this proposed um, specification. That's a bit of a grand word. It's, it's, it's really quite lightweight and high level what we've come out with. Um, but um, I'll go on to that in my next slide. So just to define, we did a lot of discussing about what we meant by import-export. Um, so we, we kind of tried to define the notion of round tripping, which which was which was used quite a bit. So, I mean, obviously it's the ability to import and export data, but we talked a lot about what does that mean in what does round tripping mean? Does it mean that um, exactly what went in needs to be able to come out? And, uh, and if you've imported from five different formats and you've merged them all together during the import process, do, do you need to be able to export those five different formats again? So, what we agreed on was. Um, Exported data can be re-imported in the same state so, and in the same format. So if you export a, a, a CSV output of 10 records um, and you re-import those immediately, you'll get, it, it will be exactly the same uh, in the system, bar like, update dates. But it doesn't necessarily guarantee the reverse. So if you put data in and then it gets edited in the system by your metadata team and then you export it, it obviously the metadata is going to be a bit different um, and what we didn't want to uh, we didn't want to have um, kind of add on to the, the scope of the group is a, a sort of maintaining a, a the state of the original deposit so that you could actually get out exactly what you put in. We didn't feel that was in the scope of what we were trying to, to discuss. So this is kind of a bit of a ham-fisted way of saying that but but it's basically, we, we don't want to guarantee a restorable snapshot of the import source data. And then the, the final one, which um, there was only really one person who had this, this use case around pulling data from multiple different um, sources, um, but we didn't want to be able to support recreating that original complex import. So um, the use case we had there was like a, a spreadsheet listing a load of things, each one of which had an associated XML file um, with some technical metadata and a mods file with some um, uh, XML descriptive metadata. So um, we didn't want to have to support that. But um, so this is a diagram which is probably not very visible to people. Um, so I'll just sort of talk through it and just imagine there are words that mean things in those boxes. Um, so what we came up with is this idea that. Um, there'd be kind of an API at, the, at both ends. So that Hyrax would have an API for being able to import and export items. And those would come out in essentially as a hash. So Hyrax doesn't necessarily need to worry too much about supporting lots of different formats and standards and all that kind of thing. And then in, the, in this middle bit, which is the bit that, would be, that we propose should be built, that's where all the kind of transformation and, and parsing happens. So Again, that would have an API, so to kick off an import or export, you'd be making a, a, a RESTful call. Um, there would be like optional features, you might have files, you might not have files, uh, you might want to supply a bag or just files and folders. So there'd be quite a lot of flexibility in this, but what we proposed is there'd be like a, a sort of a framework for in creating a parser, and that parser would have to do import and export, and that the next stage of work would be to define a, a a couple of common ones like CSV and JSON maybe. Um, then there'd be a kind of extensible set of transformers so you can act on the input data and say map a term to a particular term in a scheme or normalize dates or um, and then on the other side there'd be different reader writers for files to support different locations like cloud storage or uh, local on the server, local on the user's desktop, those kind of things. And then at the bottom of that, it just ends up with a payload, and that payload gets sent through the API. Um, and, and really, kind of late in the day, we start to talk about the, the GUI part of this, and I think there'd always been an assumption that would, there would be a GUI, but we decided that it would be useful to decouple that so that people can kind of do what they want to do. So if, if someone's use case is purely to do command line, they don't need a, a GUI for this. Um, and if there's an API, then you could add this into like the dashboard of Hyrax, 
or you could create your own JavaScript import tool. Or, so it would make it much more pluggable. Um, so that's where we got to. And so there's essentially the, the recommendations of the group is that there's definitely a gap here for, for a piece of functionality. It is, it is a bad thing that you can't export the contents of your Hyrax repository programmatically easily at the moment. Um, that we should take a RESTful approach. Um, we should take this to Cigar and say, you know, is this something that if we convened a, a second phase that this we could start working on and what are others doing and all that kind of thing, get some feedback. And then the idea then was to sort of convene a phase two to, to kind of get cracking, to flesh out the detail of those requirements a bit more. And I think the first step would be to start looking at the, the Hyrax end, defining those APIs. Um, one of the things we talked about was um, being able to kind of validate a, an import. So if there was a, a kind of API, if there was an API endpoint in Hyrax that listed the models, you could check that the models you want to import are supported. If there was a, an API endpoint that gave you back a list of properties for a particular model, you could validate that the metadata you're going to put in is actually going to go into, into supported fields. So th there's quite a lot I think we can do that's not actually tremendously complex, but would would really help. And, and, and actually, I, th I think getting that API into Hyrax before starting work on the bigger project would help a lot of people who need to move a bit faster than, say, the working group was going to work. But during this um, conference, I've chatted to a few people who are thinking about starting work on a very similar thing. So it might actually be that the working group just needs to sit back and let someone else do the work, which would be super. So are there any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Jeremy here. There he is. For the Samvera Permissioning Analysis and Design Working Group. All right, so we have a bunch of documentation on the wiki. Um, we have been analyzing how to make the Hyrax application uh, more configurable permission-wise, although the scope is expanded to say, let's not just have this be Hyrax. Um, so there are, there's a webinar that we did on the 21st of whatever the ninth month of the year is, and <clears throat> we have a slide deck that kind of goes over what this was about. <clears throat> and we'll go through that real quick. So the, the work that we did was a lot of requirements gathering and use cases from various institutions, both those in the working group as well as soliciting from others. And we spent about nine months going through this and are at a point where the analysis is done and the composition of the group does not make sense to proceed for the design phase. Uh, we had a lot of repository managers and we need more tech people involved. So there's identifying some problems. Uh, basically it's inflexible, opaque, and incomplete and inadequate documentation. And there's a whole summary of the current state as well as this document here, Permission Matrix, that was the work of Loretta Robinson at Notre Dame, as well as Emily Porter from, from Temple, maybe? Emily Porter, uh, I cannot recall her organization. Um, Maria Whitaker also was deeply involved from IU. That matrix is what we want to be building from the, the specs. Um, so we did some synthesis, outlined some design objectives, and there's some prior analysis that Notre Dame did that was a bit more designy, and 
Right now we are, I am currently working with, uh, at this point I kind of raised a hand in the partner meeting and said we need someone uh, developer oriented that can put some time into this. And so I uh, horn swoggled Rosie Metz to at least have a conversation and I will be meeting with Colin Brittle and Rosie and Larita and myself to kind of say, what does this next handoff look like? What would it, we need to make sure that this is ready to say, let's get another working group. So this one is spinning down, but I intend to kind of carry it forward administratively. <clears throat> so I think right now the big piece is we're not having a big ask yet. I imagine sometime in December we'll say, hey, we're gonna spin up a working group that we're gonna want some tech people. I think we'll want to talk about how this would intersect possibly with Hyrax. One thing that we are in absolutely intending to do is to build a prototype that is not anything in the ecosystem to say, are we able to get the permissions and the configuration right without this? And then making sure that it is something that we can splice into Hyrax with what we hope to be minimal effort. Um, but looking at this prototype as ideally reusable, but actually disposable to get the concepts down. So <clears throat> any questions? That was a whirlwind. There's a webinar, you can hit me up uh, on Slack and like three days later I'll get back to you. Um, and you can also send me an email, uh, jfriesen at nd.edu and contact me that way if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> so the last thing that we have unless anyone else came in early uh, missed an earlier opportunity uh, is the Samvera user experience interest group all right uh, my name is Adam Marling. I'm a developer at Northwestern University Libraries. I um, also work on the Avalon Media System project. So um, I guess since last Samvera Connect uh, for the UX interest group, we lost Jen Colt, who had been the facilitator previously. So I guess I was at the right place at the wrong time to kind of take over. Um, but since uh, since she left in 2018, I guess we've been um, working on two kind of main things. Uh, the Accessibility 360 audit, which our group, um, I guess the UX interest group, kind of formed you know, like a subgroup of sorts. Um, and most of the credit for that goes to Harsh Parekh from Notre Dame and Michael Trebone from Penn State, who were um, really uh, strong contributors, I guess, to taking the audit or accessibility 360 report and kind of breaking that down into a spreadsheet that kind of organized everything, which um, the three of us worked to translate into Hyrex GitHub issues and kind of match that against existing accessibility issues and then creating new issues, which has become, you know, a decent amount of, I guess, the work that we've been doing in Hyrex working groups so far. Um, so it's nice to see that um, that work kind of paying off a little bit. And then the second main thing that we've been kind of planning out, it's been mostly Nick Dragovich, who's also uh, a co-facilitator for the interest group now, um, is planning out uh, distributed usability research testing um, round two, which will be focused mostly on uh, the collection extensions features. So. Um, Initially, I think we aim to complete that by Sandberg Connect this week. Um, some things changed that did quite happen, but we're gonna be actively working on that in the next um, few months, looking into 2019. So we'll probably put out some uh, uh, communication to the community, and if anyone's interested in participating uh, in a usability study of you know, a little, I guess, part of the Hyrax application, um, we'll be reaching out for that. And then lastly, I think we're also just thinking about uh, 
maybe um, how the UX interest group could be most beneficial to the community in the rest of 2018 and beyond. Just see what you know UX or UI interests are and like what people um, could get out of what our group could provide. Um, so I think we're gonna reframe, so we have monthly meetings and I think we're gonna reframe those a little bit from being a little bit less developer focused on certain like technologies or tools and maybe um, use it as like a showcase opportunity for what cool things UX wise people are doing um, and their various projects. And also to, you know, just kind of keep it like an open conversation and discussion on the state of, I guess, UX in primarily higher X, I guess. It's like a flagship application, but any, you know, Sambera, I guess, app. And um, just kind of ask what are we doing right? What are we doing a little bit less than right? And how can we make things better? Um, and today, at, if anyone's free for lunch, we're having a UX. Um, interest group breakout session at 12.30 to kind of get some of that discussion started, if everyone's free. And uh, yeah, we meet, I think, the third Tuesday of every month. It's listed on here. Um, but info is in the wiki, if anyone's interested in joining. Any questions? Okay. Um, I know I cut you off earlier, Ben, thinking that, that uh, uh, we were on a super tight schedule and we actually have time left over. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to circle back to? No, I guess I'll just make the, the meta comment because it didn't occur to me until after I, I presented that if, you're, if your working group or interest group hasn't sent your report materials back to the list, it's probably good to write up a brief introductory thing, and maybe link your slides back to the tech of the community list is appropriate. Okay. All right, thank you everybody. Uh, we get an extra 10 minutes for a break that Ooh. goes to 10.30. Um, and uh, thank you for coming. <laughs>